mistakes that these other people have made. We're not going to get knocked in the head. We're not going to do none of that stuff. You see, because our mission is to disseminate the right information to the American people. You know what I mean? We already know we can't trust the media. We already know we can't trust those politicians. We already know that. And we're not going to make, this, make the same mistake that we made before by trusting them. A liar is a liar, a deceiver. You know what I mean? You cannot trust lying, deceiving people. I leave it up to you, America, to decide for yourself. Are you moral? Have you fell down on the job? Well, that's all right. You see, you fell down before. You're not going to fall down anymore. That's what counts. Do you know what I mean? So take heart. Take heart. Be strong. Stand up for America. Boy, that was well said, boy. I mean, you're, you're getting more eloquent by the day. That's wonderful. I like the way you put that. You know, I met this man not long ago, and he just inspired me so. You know, we have politicians with slick words, and they pay speech writers $150,000 and everything, but this man right here doesn't know any of that kind of bunk. He only knows the truth. And boy, does he tell it like it is. And I really like that. Division. And that's what we need in our politicians. We want them transparent. We want them held accountable for everything that they do. We want people, we want politicians that know the difference between right and wrong, and then they'll do what is right. How's that for a miracle? That's what we want. We demand it. We don't just want it. We demand it. And we're going to see if we get it. We will not accept less than that. We're not going to accept corporate liars and schemers controlling our lives. We will not accept this. Educate, educate your children. The children represent the future. It's important that we do something about the state of America now so that when our children grow up and they put in positions of running the United States and the world, it'll be a better place for everybody. You know what I mean? And then when they grow up, they'll have something of real value to teach their children. Think about it. When, when I was in the military, my barracks room was known as the United Nations because we had all kinds of foreign students in there. And at one point, during the day, we had uh, 36 or seven different nations represented. And you know, we always got along fine. We had the problems. You know what it is? What we found out, this is the one thing we agreed on above everything else. Governments and false leaders create, stoke the fire of hatred. And they do this deliberately to achieve their selfish, evil goals. They are the ones who create wars so that people die. That's you and me that dies. Well, not exactly you and me. It's, we're the survivors. But those of us who have died, and I salute all of them because they gave all. This hatred is being put out by these false leaders to divide us, to control us, to take advantage of us, to use us. But is it to help us? No, it is not. And this is what we've got to get rid of. If you want America, to let me show you how you can, you know, everybody in America could be a millionaire today. Let me show you how easy it is, okay? Let's go, let's go over to Fannie Mae. Let's take all the extra interest in the house, all that extra money right there. And instead of giving it to the fat cats, why don't we just take that and build housing and that solves your homeless problem. We could easily raise trillions of dollars and make everybody in this country a millionaire. And we could do this in three months. Why aren't we doing it? Why are we killing people? Why is our boys dying? Because there's evil leaders and they need to be booted out. That's why. And I'll tell it like it is. If you don't like to hear me say it, that's just too bad because I'm not going to stop. And I'll tell you something else. If you think they're so holy and righteous, consider this. I got on Google Earth the other day and I, I, I pressed the images button. And then I typed in H.W. Bush. And do you know that there's a picture there that shows him in Dallas, Texas on a fateful day in November of 1963, standing just outside the door of the armory building smoking a cigarette. There he is. And guess what? Oswald is just about to run out the door. What was he doing there? 
<laughs> what was our future president doing there? I'll leave you to start Googling. I've read what Ted Kennedy and others thought. It's stunning. Did you know that Kennedy's last statements there at the airport was he was going to put us on silver? He wanted a new currency. He was going to stop the evil thieving going on. He didn't get a chance. He got blowed away. What was George Bush doing there that day? I think that he owes the American people an explanation of that. But why does he keep going back and staying in a hotel just two blocks away looking over Dealey Plaza uh, in a certain day in November? Gloating with revenge, maybe? I wonder. And I think we have the right to know the answers to questions like these. All, you think of all the stuff that's being withheld from the American people and all the corruption in Washington. Why is this happening? Because we have not stood up as an American people. We've trusted them. In America, I'm telling you, now is the time to stand up. We've got to do it now. We've got to. We won't get another chance. They're massing forces right now to stop us. We have got to stand up as a united people and wave old glory in their face and say, we're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. We want our country back. We are going to stand for the rebirth and regeneration of America. We're going to start this country over again and take it back to the glory days when we had people all over the world that respected us. They didn't make fun of us. They weren't afraid of us. They didn't look down upon us. They respected us and we helped the world and we taught the world and we planted fields and everything for the people. And this is what we've got to do. We've got to take it back and magnify it and make it new. Make it fit today's world. We've got to do this and show them the greatness of America again. I wave the flag proudly. Sometimes I'll be down here in my wheelchair out there in the crosswalk with my flag sticking up and I'll wave old glory proudly till I die. This country is the greatest country on the face of the earth. I love America. This is my land. My people are buried here. Their bodies and their blood is mixed with the soil. There's no corporation in any other country of the world that can come here and buy my grandfather's grave. This is my land. This is our land. This is America. And we must stand up and protect it. We must take it back. We have to do this now. And we cannot wait. We need your help. This is a revolution. And we have, it's a peaceful re revolution. We don't believe in violence. We don't want to shoot guns. We don't want to do anything wrong. We want to do what's right. We want to tell the truth. We want to look up and be above reproach. We want to be good people. We want to show our integrity, our dignity, and our character. We want to show the compassion in our hearts for our fellow man. We want to include all people. Why should we exclude anybody? This is what we want to do. This is what we're out to. We're out to rectify the finances of America and make equality and opportunity for everybody. We want that American dream brought back and made for today's world. We've got the young people, we've got the brains, and we've got the know-how. Why aren't we doing it? Because we're being stopped right now by the corporations. But that day is not long. Shame on you corporations that are doing this to us. Your day is numbered. If you don't cooperate with us, your day is numbered. American people are going to rise up for honesty. This is a revolution about honor, which means honesty. We are promoting honesty in everything. We want transparency. We want everybody to see the truth. We don't want hidden secrets. That's what's killing us now. That's how they did it to us. That's how they sold us the false mortgages and took our houses away from us. They lied to us and they deceived us and they tricked us. And they presented one thing and gave us another. It was called switch and bait. And it's legal because they held the reins of control. If we did it, we'd be behind bars. Now I'll call a spade a spade and let them call me on that. I'm an old veteran. I gave my time to this country, and if I have to give the rest of my life, I just regret that I have but one body and one life to give to this revolution and to, to bring America back. This is what I want. I want to inspire you. I want you to follow my lead. I want you to get out there and stand up for America. And do it now. Don't wait. Get involved. We need you. And you need it for your family and your loved ones as well. Do you want to go down the tubes and later say, Oh, if I had only taken the time. Do you really want to do that? Is that how you're going to answer your grandchildren? It's going to take us boomers to lead the way, to show them. Our, our wisdom mixed with the brains of the young and the energy of the young can accomplish miracles. I believe in miracles because I've seen them.
It ain't called faith. It's called experience. And we got experience. We got wisdom. And we got know-how. We come from a world when there was quality with quantity. It wasn't cheap overseas imports. And we need our jobs brought back home. And we need to be producing quality in this country. This is our country. We need to be selling to the others. But we need to be inclusive and righteous in the way we do things. We must be above reproach. And above all, we must keep our honor. And if we can do that, America will be reborn again, peacefully, non-violently, in the right way. And you know, there's a there's an old saying that right is might. Think about that phrase. Might is right too. And we'll have that might because we'll have that strength in numbers and people. But we'll also, it'll be the other way around. So yeah, we can do it. And that's why we need you. That's why we're talking to you. We want to share this vision with you. We want it to catch on. We want a lot of fire and get you guys going. We want you to stand up and salute America. I stand there and salute that flag. You know, that makes me so proud to be able to salute a flag that represents freedom. Where's our freedom today? Why did the New York police want to have papers for people to walk on the sidewalk to go to the subway? What freedom is that? Who owns that subway? Ain't it the taxpayers? Well, then why do they have to bow to a lord and master and uh, fill out paperwork and uh, pay money to get, get on the subway? Think about that for a minute. You've already paid for that subway with your taxes. Why are you doing it again and not, not raising a peep about it? Why are you letting the the cops get out there and pepper spray people right in their eyes and show their brutality. Why is this happening when they're making vast sums of money? In fact, if you look around, you'll see some policemen sleeping in their cars on duty while we're paying them 50000 a year to guard us. Is that who you want guarding you? Why aren't people doing what's right? It's because they're demoralized. They're demoralized because of these evil, greedy leaders. These leaders are in finance, they're in government, they're in corporations, and they're moral leaders, and they're wrong, and they're going to have to relinquish the control they have now. They don't have a choice. Because the whole world is going to rise up against them. In fact, it's already started. We're united around this globe. That's just the way we feel. What do you think of that, Walter? I got to preach in here took some time away from you. I kind of want to talk to you. Uh, thank you for the end of the day. You didn't take any time for me. You didn't spend any time with the American people that you see with me. I was right there with you. Thank you, Walter. I can share my passion in my heart. Oh, if I could just get everybody involved. And, you know, I want to tell you guys something. Out of there. It don't take much sacrifice to come down here to the plaza. Do you know we're in the Cesar Chavez Plaza? Isn't it funny that the police can come here and steal the signs of these people in a plaza dedicated by Cesar Chavez who fought for the rights of people? Isn't that ironic? You know, I come here, I live almost 70 miles away, and I can drive up here. I've had many, many heart attacks. I've had open heart surgery. And you know something? I come here. I'm not going to let that stop me. I'd rather die than to see this country go down the tubes. I took an oath when I joined the military to defend this country against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I took an oath to defend America because I believe in America. Everybody in all my family joined the military as soon as we become of age. It wasn't a duty. It was a joy. It was something we looked forward to, to stand up for our country because it was the way we were raised. And I see that to, to this day, it's a joy for me to stand up for this country. And if I, I will give everything in my life for it. I'm not asking you for all of that. I'm asking for your dedication, your thoughts, your passion. I'm asking for you to come down and maybe help out physically a little bit. And if you can't do that, do it from home. At least use the telephone. You know, talk to your friends. Inspire people with your ideas. Who knows, you may have the next great idea to start a new government here. We need you. We need your mind. Because your voice counts. These days of...
the, the corporate leaders rule in the masses, and the masses, no matter what they say, don't count. That's over. This vote rigging's got to go. We don't believe in rigged votes. It's got to be transparent and honest right out in front of the people. And that's all we're going to accept. That's what we demand, and that's what it's going to be. We will not accept less than that. We're deadly serious. This world has to change for the survival of humanity. Now, my wife died last year. They're in a the hospital. I went to the door to say hi to her. It was 112 degrees, high humidity. I kind of collapsed at the door, and these nurses was waiting down by the elevators and saw me. So I, I dashed into the room right there where she was, and I said, Hi, honey. She says, Hi, honey. And the nurses slammed me in a wheelchair and said, He's had a heart attack. We're taking him. Bye. I didn't know that would be the next to last time I would ever hear my wife's voice. Well, you do seem to be doing good things. I never knew. So I went to the emergency room, and I woke up. And I worried and worried. Finally, I got to go where they had taken my wife to, and I saw her. I wasn't supposed to travel, but I did. And as I had a little visit with her, and as I went to leave, something made me go back to the door and said, Honey, I want you to know that I have truly been loved. She smiled and waved, and I went around the corner to go home. Honey, oh, I ducked back in real quick and looked around the corner, and there she was smiling at me. Honey, I want you to know that I have been truly loved too. And those were the last words I ever heard her say. I'm sorry. An infection in the IV tube I guess, I guess, I don't nailed her know. No, I and killed her. And after I buried her, there was another heart attack. And then at Christmas time, it was so lonely. And there was another heart attack. And then, you know, I want to show you. I want to show you. I brought it with me just so I can show you. My mortgage holder, that, that heart attack was December 28th. On January the 2nd, he shows up at my door. He leaves this letter right here, this envelope on my door where he threatens to evict me and throw me out. Here I am, a disabled veteran. I can't do anything. I can't work. I can't live in the cold. I'm dead if this happens to me and he's going to throw me out. You think that didn't hurt and my wife just gone? That's when my little chihuahua puppy died. I had for 15 years. That hurt too. I'm doing things about it these days. I mail letters like to Sheriff Joe. I write things to Mayor Bloomberg. I do a lot of things. I've got a big plot still inside of me. But you know something? I'm gonna be I'm gonna make it through this. I'm gonna make it through because I have the love of the people. See, I've suffered a lot to come down here. I'm not asking you to do what I've done. I'm trying to set the example for you though and say follow my challenge, follow my lead, please to whatever degree that you can. If the best you can do is just to mail a letter to somebody and change their life, do it. Help us. You know, if, if just making a donation or whatever, do that. This is what we're asking because we're not going to stop. We're not going to back down. And if they arrest all of us and take us to jail, there's more of us. There always will be. We're just going to keep coming. They can't stop us. We're going to win this one, but it'll be a long, hard struggle because evil people, as you have seen with the recent dictators over in the Middle East, they don't like to give up power too much, and these over here in this country won't either. So it's going to be a long, hard struggle. But now, think about this for a minute, people of America. Who supports all those corporate people? Who's doing their laundry and driving their limousines, washing their cars, mowing their lawns, and what travel agent is booking their tickets, etc. What if we all quit? What could they do? Where would they get their food? Who's going to grow it for them? Do you want profit so bad you'd sell to them and not the American people? Sell it to the American people instead and let, the corp let those corporate rulers go hungry. They need to. They need to get on food stamps and learn what it's like. They need to suffer a little bit like they've made us suffer. They need to know what the word pain is. 
they think pain, like one congressman down there in Louisiana, I think it was, sit there and started griping, griping, because he had to live on only $6,000 a month. How horrible, how terrible. What a jerk. He needs to be thrown out. He needs to go get a job. I know where they're digging some ditches down here on the south side of Phoenix. He can go there and get a job. They'll pay. He needs to learn what it's like. Do something good for the first time in his life <laughs> instead of running his mouth and policing the people. I'm tired of con jobs, and I'll call it like it is. Now, prove me wrong. If you don't like what I say, you prove me wrong. Can you do it? Can you do it without lying? And if not, then you know I'm right. And I know I'm right because I searched in my soul. I searched up above, spiritually, inside myself for these answers long before I brought them to this camera. I know I'm right. I know it with all my heart. Now, Walter, I watched you one day. You come down here and you talked. You had the most amazing, I mean, I literally had tears from your speech rolling down my face. I'd never seen a man in my life that had so much wisdom and touched my heart the way that you did. I, you know, you are a, a true blessing to this movement and to the American people. And I believe you've been reserved all your life for this moment so that you can tell them because you've had a hard walk in your life. But boy, you've got more wisdom than the whole group of them in Washington put together. Am I right? He's got more wisdom than all of Congress put together. There's what, 500 some odd people there. This man right here's got more wisdom than them because he knows what he's talking about. At least he can agree with himself, and that's more than Congress can do. You know why Congress fights? Because they're all being lobbied. You know what lobbying is? Lobbying is people trying to influence people to do evil things for just them against the will of the people. It's called cheating and scheming. Why don't we just use English language here? It ain't for you. When was the last some time someone went to Congress and done something for you? That makes me mad. You go to an airport today and they want to fleece you and frisk you and put you on a no-fly list and everything else. Well, what about us doing that to them? It ain't us running around the world making the trouble in Dubai. Who's checking out the government leaders to see what lies they're telling? What are they packing in their suitcases? I think the American people have a right to know. They're not above us. They're supposed to be our public servants. We hire them and they're supposed to report to us and do what we pay them to do. That ain't what's happening. And it's got out of control. And I'm calling upon America to pull the reins in and put them back under control. And if you have any doubts about what we need to do next, take action. Take whatever action is necessary to bring about a positive change in America. You see, you might think it's, it's going to be a heavy load and, and a tough ride. I got news for you. One person trying to lift the weight is pretty heavy. But you get 200,000 people trying Amen. to lift that weight, Amen. it becomes pretty light. You see what I'm saying? So all of us together can do anything we want to do. Some, some people think it takes a real large percentage to bring about a change. Guess what? If you knock a small hole in a boat in, 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 in a bowl of water, all of the water will come out. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? See, so don't be discouraged. Instead, educate your friends. Encourage your friends. Educate your fellow Americans. Encourage, encourage them. As far as I'm concerned, everybody on this soil is an American. Whether they can speak English, or, uh, or Afghanistan or, or Spanish or whatever. If they're in America, the reason that they are here is and came here from their country is because they love America. They love our ideas. They love our, our Constitution. Do you know what I mean? They want to be Americans, and they are Americans. You see? So, for, once again, for all of my brothers that came from all around the world, I welcome you to my house. I welcome you to the lamp that stands beside the golden door. That door is open to you. Thank you for being here. 
thank you for, for lending your expertise and your knowledge and your talents to America to help make America what it is today. I want to acknowledge you for that. You see, so to all my American fellow American friends, take heart, stand up for America. Wherever you are, however you can, 24-7, and we'll make America a better place and the world a better place. You see, because whether you realize it or not, that's our responsibility. He's, he's great, man. He's like the Statue of Liberty or something, just the way he speaks. Uh, you know, the Statue of Liberty, I've climbed it many times. I've took a lot of foreign people that come to this country and took them to the top. I can't do it anymore. But that's the lady I'm in love with. It's quite a sight to see her crying. Her little heart is broken. Lady Liberty is grieving. She's a hurt. She's being racked with sobs now as she looks over this land and sees the horrible pain that her people are in. We've got to comfort Lady Liberty by setting things right so she'll smile for us. Are you guys the mean cops? Those arms have been open to people all over this world. And sadly, those arms are being forced not to accept people. It's sad. It is so sad. You know, I think back. I've always had a love affair with America. And this, this country here is the hopes and ideals of the world. We were the shining light on the hill for the entire world to look to. Everybody admired us and looked up to us all over the world. In my opinion, freedom of speech should allow Because we led the way. And people, we've got to lead the way again. We've got to do this again. We cannot have any more of this greed and corruption and this evil scheming. It is pure greed. I mean, a CEO getting $33 million severance pay so he can go to the next job and face the people over there. Now, this is plain wrong. Why isn't there any law against it? Why is there no outcry against it? Make your voice heard. You know, you just talking about that water in the bathtub. You know, if you take a cup and you fill it just one drop at a time, like one person at a time doing something, do you know that cup will eventually flow over with goodness? It only takes one drop to make it flow over. That's why we need you. One drop at a time, and that cup will fill up fast. And we can make a big difference. And that's what we've got to do. Absolutely. We really do, Walter. Absolutely. You know, people may say things about us being out here and everything, but we're on the front lines. And I'm, I'm proud to be on the front lines. I'm proud to include people. You know, I want to see everybody included in this group. I don't believe in discrimination, and I don't believe in harassment because of who you are. One thing I absolutely hate is for people to be turned away because of the color of their skin or because of the words they say or because of the look. I mean, if they wear their hair different from the way I do, what gives me the right to say anything about them? You know, there but for the grace of God goes I out in the world, you know. And I, I want to look and say, I love everybody. I want everybody to have that fair chance. I'll accept you because you accept me. I'll treat you with respect because you treat me with respect. But I'll warn you also, your right to swing your fist is going to stop before it gets to my nose. And I'm going to stand up for my rights. Now, I may turn the other cheek, but I ain't saying what's going to happen if you slap the other one. There's that side of me where I stand up for what I believe in. I'm just telling you how it is. Because this this country is, a, in many ways, a magical country. It wasn't supposed to exist. And these, it's been hijacked. It's been stolen from us. How did we get trillions of dollars in debt? Did you spend the money? I didn't. Who did? It wasn't me. I didn't authorize it. I didn't vote for it. So who did it? Thieves. Thieves. I'm, tall, I'm calling our politicians thieves. They don't like it, let them change their ways. Prove me wrong. All of those people, all of those people that abuses America, that steals from the American people and that disrespects the Constitution are guilty of high 
treason. Ain't no need to skirting around it or stepping around it. That's what they're guilty of. Malfeasance in office. That's what they're guilty of. Yeah. I mentioned, you know, I mentioned Kennedy while ago and then Silver. You know, Nixon had his gold and immediately had Watergate and he was put out. And now we're trillions of dollars in debt on this round. But look what we just been through in the last few years. I don't really have to say any more to it. It sure wasn't an angel that did all that horrible things. It was a damn snake in the grass. And I think the American people have the right to know the facts. I want to see all that uncovered. I want blame put where it belongs and justice served. We must be a land of justice and accountability. We must do. I know I'm right. Thank you. I know you're applauding me in your hearts. I can feel it. You know why? Because you're basic. You're, you're decent. You're good. You're like me. You're just a common person that says, hey, all I want to do is have happiness and live my life, you know, and, and be able to do the things I want to do and prosper, you know, and have some security at home. Sure. I want all them things, too. And as I've said many times, I don't have nothing against the rich. I love money, too. Hey, I'd like to have some money. I never had any big money, but I'd like to have it. show you right. But I want mine honestly. I don't want it through deceit and cheating and scheming and lying. You know, give it to me honestly. I, that, that's the way I feel about it. I don't want, I want to be able to look in the mirror. You know, when I go home at night, I can look in the mirror and be proud of who I am. I may not be much. I may not have a lot of stuff in my circle. But I'm proud of who I am. Because they don't lie to me. How many politicians can say that? How many corporate leaders can say I did good today for people and I didn't screw anybody over out of their home? What about the bankers? How many of them have actually come out and done something wonderful for you? Or did you get letters in the mail saying, sorry, but you better move out, move your family out in the street? It wasn't me that did those things, it was them. I'm like you. And you know what I want? I want to see equality. I want to see you happy. I want to see you in your home with money in the bank. I want your children taken care of. I want you to have an education. Please do these things. Please join us. Your life and our lives depend upon it. In fact, the lives of the whole world. You know, they're looking to America for leadership. We've got to provide it. We can't wait for New York City or Florida to pick up the baton. It's us. We must show the way. Phoenix must rise again. And this time, without corrupt leadership. This time, with truth and justice on its side. And transparency and accountability and righteousness in its wings. Yeah, let's rise up that way and make Phoenix a shining example to the rest of the world. We can do it. You think not? Well, why not? Why don't you think we can do it? Oh, ye of little faith, let's band together and put our minds together. What can't we do? We're smart, we're talented, we got wisdom. We've already been through hell and lived through, we got wisdom. We got more than stupid congressmen do that don't even know what it's like to be on food stamps. We know what to do. We know the difference between right and wrong. That's why we don't go to jail. Except when we're being harassed and depressed and persecuted unfairly and unjustly. Here's your chance to put into practice all of those beautiful, wonderful things that you think about all the time and that you know in your spirit and your soul is right. Here's your chance. Don't let it pass you by. Start loving people. Hey, man, it begins Start to being respectful to people. Start being truthful to people. Get a mosquito. You know, I mean, it's, it's just like Easy Best said from the beginning. It's about love. It's about love. You know what I mean? It's like, I know you love your country. I know there's millions of Americans out there that love this country. I also know that part of the problem is 
lot of them is medicated to the point to where it's, they can't think properly. Yes. See, this is one of the reasons behind all of these drug companies all over the place. They've got everybody on all kinds of money, honey, money, and all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? Pills that most people don't know the side effects of. Get a PDR. It's called a doctor's desk reference. Read about the side effects of the medication that you're taking. And I bet you, you'll put that shit down. You'll stop taking that poison that's killing you. And you'll stop giving that poison to your children that's killing them. Anytime you alter the chemical makeup of a human being, it, it, it destroys their chromosomes, do you know what I mean? It destroys things, it alters your chemical body, and it causes destruction to your internal organs. You might say, you're no doctor, you're right, I'm not. I don't practice on people to find out what medications will do to them. And I'm not a drug salesman that gives them enough pills to make them real sick so I can make a lot of money at their expense and use them for guinea pigs without them knowing it. While I proclaim publicly I'm helping them. Yes. I'm not false. Remember, they expose our American people and our American soldiers to radiation. Massive doses of radiation. Told them it was their duty. They exposed the whole town up in northern Arizona to serious radi radiation. You may not know about that. They did that. Evil people. You remember? They did experiments on people with syphilis. Deliberately gave them syphilis. And didn't treat it for years to see what it'll do to people. Evil people have no place in American, and especially in American government, or running anything in, an, in America. My question to you, are you moral? Do you believe in God? You know what's a trip to me? A lot of people afraid to even mention God's name, God's name anymore, out of fear that they might offend somebody by mentioning God's name. You know what I mean? I think that's ridiculous. That's absurd. What's happened to you? Why would you allow these people, these evil people, to take prayer out of the school? Our children need to know about goodness. Anybody that violates your constitutional rights are subject to lawsuit. Anybody. Oh, does that mean members of Congress? It says in the law book, our law book, anybody with no exception. Does that mean greedy corporate owners? <laughs> it says in our law book, without exception, anybody. Does that include our local leaders? It says in our law book, anybody that violates your constitutional rights are subject to lawsuit. I guess that means anybody. I think that covers the whole picture. Boy, you said a mouthful right there, I'm telling you. You did good, Walter. <laughs> See what I mean? He's, he's just he just got it together. I mean, right right there. He's, he's just wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. You're more than welcome, well, Walter. See, That's why I admire you. I have a passion, passionate love for the United States of America as well. That's why we were automatically on the same page. You see? Yes. We don't need a script. Oh, this, yes. This yes, ain't no yes. movie. You know what I mean? The reason that we're doing this is because we love America with a passion.